Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today I'm here with part three of my one pattern three ways that I've been working on which are the Persephone pants by Anna Allen clothing. All right before we get started I've had some requests for me to kind of show what I'm actually wearing a little bit um, more in depth and I think I'm already yeah, I can't really back up much um, but I am wearing today a graphic <laughs> A lot of boob. Um, a graphic tee um, that I bought. I'm wearing Dawn jeans <laughs> and my Anna Allen, or not Anna, my uh, Alina Design Co. Fulton blazer that I made for um, last spring, the Great Module Sew Along. Uh, and this was the t-shirt that was gifted to me. It's an Etsy shop. Um, they've got some great graphic tees. And actually, you're going to see, obviously, everything that I'm wearing, actually, you'll see. You've already seen the Dawn jeans, um, but this is all going into my spring capsule wardrobe. So um, yeah, that'll be showing up. The tops will be showing up um, on that next series video. Um, we'll talk about that at the end. Okay, I really quickly want to talk about these because I have a lot of footage to show you on how I uh, sew in the fly. I'm showing you that today, um, how I do a zipper fly instead of the button fly that this pattern uh, comes with. And then also I'm showing you how I did the uh, twill tape into the top of the waistband. So here's my next pair of Persephone's. All right, I did, um, I think this is actually the cream, is it what it's called? Uh, the heavyweight linen from the fabric store. I'll leave it the fabric link down below because this is one of the ones they always have. Um, and I did full length Persephone's. Now, in order to do this, I added six inches to the bottom of the pattern, which is a, a cropped leg. Um, I just added six inches to the bottom and I had figured that up by making the cropped pair and then deciding how much uh, more length that I wanted in order for them to go to the floor. And I just went straight down, just straight down because <laughs> these are a nice straight wide leg. Um, I did put on the Megan Nielsen pocket pattern, um, back pockets on these, although someone pointed out that um, Anna Allen does have a whole bunch of templates for pockets that you can put on both this pet, the Persephone's and also um, the Philippa jeans as well. So I will leave a link down to that below as well if you, um, and they're free, uh, free, so you can uh, go have a look if they want to play around with some pockets as well. So no front pockets. Um, I did the zipper and I chose... My buttonhole, I mean my buttonhole just a little bit too small, and I know that it'll stretch out eventually, but man. <laughs> okay, um, I think my buttonholer was getting caught on the button loop when I was making it. But I actually chose kind of a taupe um, or a pale tan zipper. Um, I mean, th this is white, so, or ivory, so you can see, you know, when things are pushed up, you can see the um, ivory on ivory, you know, kind of backed up, which these pants are very important to wear. Um, nude to me colored underwear because <laughs> you can see um and that's the way it is with all white linen pants but yeah and I'll show you more about that zipper in the um tutorial that I'll show you here at the end and then I just chose uh, a horn button that I had in my stash just kind of a nice lightweight but I kind of liked that look with it uh, I did go ahead and lowered the rise on these by an inch, which is the same that I did for my pleather pair which were not part of this series but I made those back in February Mostly because I was wearing my jean, my lighter jean ones, um, actually when I was making these, and noticed that that the pants do have a tendency to ride up a little bit more, and I think that's just because there is extra length. So I just went ahead, and <laughs> I'm constantly playing with the rise of my pants, and like I want it to be high rise because that's what we're going for, but where's comfortable? So it's just a constant game. So I did go ahead and lower this the one inch. So now. I'm gonna wear these a few times, um, the jury's still out. Um, I cut my waistband into a two-piece waistband so that I could put my twill tape there in the top so there is a seam right there along the top of the waistband, um, which I'll show you how I did here in a minute. Other than that, I did an inch and a half, inch and a half? Yeah, I think an inch and a half hem, and I just surged the edge and then folded it under. Um, that way, if anything shrinks, although I am going to um, air dry these when I when I dry them, and I'm starting to do that with my jeans as well, because that's driving me nuts when the length, it's just the length that shrinks up. And then I'll just toss them in the dryer just for a little fluff up before I wear them. Um, but just in case, I left myself a decent sized hem, because um, I do want these to be floor length. So there you have it. Those are my linen Persephone's. I really wanted to do navy, but my navy linen that I have in my stash just wasn't heavy enough, um, I don't think, to work for this kind of pants. I think I could make trousers with it, but it needed to be something a little more relaxed through the hip. Um, these are very fitted through the hip and then relaxed through the leg. Um, so I needed just the heavier weight. I could have ordered some, but I'm trying not to. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I use the white, I mean this is gonna go into, I mean it's a pair of white linen pants, how can you go wrong? White to me, it's cream, but you know what I mean. Um, I mean, how can you go wrong? I think these are just gonna get worn to death this summer. Even in the hot weather, I think I can get away with a, you know, a tank or something or a, a cami with um, the white linen pants. Just very nice, cool, easy breezy. So there you have it. Um, I'm gonna send you to the tutorials now to show you the pieces, um, how I put in the zip fly, and then also how I do the twill tape, um, which is great for linen pants because linen does tend to grow, especially in, when it warms up to your body heat. Um, keeps the waist where it's supposed to be. All right, Tuesday was supposed to be the next part of my wardrobe series, which I was gonna talk about the tops, um, the tops I'm pulling from my wardrobe, and the toppers, so the jackets and that sort of thing. Um, and then the plans of a few more that I, I still would like to make, but I'm gonna push that to next Friday because on Tuesday, uh, the pants pattern that I was kind of alluding to <laughs> Uh, on Tuesday is gonna be released. So I'm gonna do a full video on that. It's a new pattern release, it's so good. It's such a, they're so good. I love them so much. So I will have that video on Tuesday and then Friday will be the continuation, excuse me, <laughs> continuation of the wardrobe series and then I'll get back on Tuesdays. So you'll have one on Friday and then you'll have another wardrobe which will be my accessories and shoes on the following Tuesday. So just gonna sneak in a little uh, pattern release there. Um, so that will be on Tuesday. And then as far as the sew along, I have gone back to filming with my phone so I can get the wider angles um, when I'm at the sewing machine and it's the chatty ones. Um, it's not the voice the vo voiceover. So that will be on um, Sunday and I am making progress. I'm not finished with it quite yet, but I'm trying to film and get it completely finished because we're um, up for some colder, colder for spring. I think Tuesday or something, the high here is only like 49. So <laughs> It's Indiana spring for you. So I really want to wear my trench coat. It's like perfect weather. So I am trying to get that finished and get all the um, uh, sew alongs and stuff all filmed so that uh, the videos for the sew along filmed. So um, yeah, I can get to wearing that. It's really good. <laughs> it's a really good trench coat. So if you can stick with me on this one, I think you're really going to like it. It's just got a lot of really great details. It's a really good pattern. So Anyway, that's all I have for today. I'm going to send you to the tutorial. I will s hope you guys have a good weekend, a good Friday, and I'll see you guys on Sunday. Bye. Okay, so for this pair, this is what we need to have. Um, okay, in full disclosure, I was cutting all of this out while also trying to answer um, language arts questions, um, grammar in sp specifically for my son, and I totally cut these out without putting the fly piece onto the um, main body of the pant pattern like I showed you how I did last week. So we're going to pretend that this isn't sewn on. <laughs> Just pretend that that was cut on because that's what I intended. So we have our front and our back with our grown on <laughs> fly. I've just gone ahead and pinked this. Obviously you would not have this seam if this were cut onto the front. So we're just gonna pretend that's not there and I'm gonna show you how I finish everything um, and do the zipper as if I had cut it grown on. So just a little lesson in um, not trying to multitask when working on sewing tutorials. All right, so I've got both my front or both my pant pieces basically because the front and the back are cut on um, the same piece. There's no side seam. Um, I've used the Megan Nielsen Dawn pack cut just because that's not what I already had, but I, again, will link below um, where Anna Allen, uh, the, her website has pocket pieces and stuff to use for this pair and the uh, uh, Philippa jeans as well. You can use them both. So I've got two cut out. Um, let's see what else do I have. So if you had cut them out with your fly grown on, you would need to cut out with the fly piece two of these in interfacing and then fuse them onto the front of the pant you know, just like I have done here, obviously. You wouldn't have a seam. Uh, then you need your belt loop piece, which is just a long carrier, the carrier piece. You cut one of those and that is here. And then, um, well, technically you just need one of these. This is the um, underlap that goes, you'll be putting it uh, behind the zipper. I've got two just because I had it, my fabric doubled up, so I just cut it out twice. All right, let's talk about the waistband. So this is the waistband piece here. Again, I cut out, even though I cut out a size eight everywhere else, I cut out a size 10 in the waist, just so I have enough to play around with. Um, oh, good heavens. Hold on, let me tape that. 
I was having issues holding that in half. Okay, so we have our waistband piece that typically this gets cut out um, one, just like this. You cut one of these out and then I have been interfacing the entirety of the thing. But for this, I want to put some twill tape in the top of that, the top of the waistband, just to make sure that everything stays um, tight because linen has a tendency to grow. It's just a looser weave, just the nature of the fiber, it will grow. So um, what I want to do, or what I did, is I folded this in half, which is the fold line. So this is how, you know, if you were making it, it would be sewn. I folded it in half, and then I added a half of an inch seam allowance up here at the top when I was cutting it out. And I cut out two because I want a front waistband and a back waistband. If that makes sense. So a waistband and a facing, basically. So I've added I added a half an inch seam allowance to the top here at the fold so that I could cut you know my notches here, and cut it out twice, which is right here. And I put interfacing on the back of both pieces, so they can be used interchangeably. You know, one's going to be the waistband and one will be the facing. Okay. So that's what you need for this pair. So um, next we'll go and I'll show you how I do my fly. And I will also show you how I finish off my, um, oh, the front fly. And then also the um, rest of the crotch curve there with the um, surgery. I've had a lot of questions about that. And then we'll put the fly in or the zipper into the fly. And um, yeah, then I'll show you how I do the waistband. Okay. Okay. Let me show you how I do my surging. Remember. This seems not there. <laughs> All right, I also just put in fresh thread. All right, so I'm just going to surge and try not to cut anything off. I'm only doing the um, flight fly piece. So when I get close, wait, hold on. No, you're not gonna have this issue because you're not gonna have a seam there. All right, I fold this out of the way. So then it just goes very carefully so as not to accidentally cut anything off. And then, clip that. Uh, okay, so then once I have done that I leave a tail here and then I just thread this onto a tapestry needle like a big darning needle um, I think they actually sell things for this but I just use a big tapestry darning needle whatever you want to call it because it's got kind of a somewhat sharp point thread it on there and then I just feed it back through so I haven't I don't tie anything off I don't really find that necessary but feed it back through the line of stitching and then clip off the excess. I go about, I don't know, three quarters to a, of an inch to a full inch back through the line of stitching. And I do that on both sides. And then we will finish off the crotch curve after a little bit. Um, we actually will clip into the dot, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then this will get finished together with the other side of the pants. So that's how I do that. So yeah, I just kind of fold it out of the way. You just want to, I mean, occasionally I will catch a little bit of a fold there and then you have to go and unpick a little bit. But for the most part, if you go slow, you can get around not cutting or um, surging onto that part of the curve. Okay, let's put this fly in. Okay, let's sew in this fly. So I have my pieces together. <laughs> Ignore the seam. Have my pieces together and... Um, I'm going to, now you're not going to be able to see, I've marked actually my um, center front line. So there was a notch at the top of the pattern that marks center front. I've made a line, I think you can kind of see it, um, down to the dot or the notch here. And then I have pinned the rest of my um, seam allowance together. So this is, I've got the two sides and I finished both off with the serging there. Um sure that that's all lining up properly. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start, I'm um, first using a basting stitch and I have um, got it at a 5.0 millimeter length. 
So I'm first going to, I'm sewing this with a basting stitch from the top down to the dot. You don't really need to backstitch there, but my backstitch is on. Now I'm going to take it back to my regular 2.5 millimeter stitch length and start right at that dot. And the seam allowance here at the crotch of this pattern is 3 eighths of an inch. It's half inch everywhere else, but in the front crotch, it's 3 eighths. So now I'm just going to finish sewing. All right, so now I am going to take some scissors and I'm gonna cut from here right to that point very carefully. Okay, now what I'm going to do, and you'll notice, I mean, this part is not finished with a um, serger or anything, but because it's cut on the bias, you're usually okay. And I actually hit this with um, fray check when I'm pressing things open. All right, so now I'm gonna go to the serger and I'm just gonna fold that out of the way and I'm just gonna serge these two seams together. And then I will meet you right back here. Well, I'll take you with me. <laughs> okay, now we're at the serger. Very close to the machine. <laughs> All right, so now I'm just going to serge these two together. So I'm just gonna fold this out of the way and that, since I've clipped that, I mean, be careful, you don't wanna rip the fabric. We're just gonna raise the presser foot, actually. I'm going to go at it the other way. So put that down. And I'm just going to, I'm not going to cut anything off. I'm just serging those two seam allowances together. And then when I get up here, this is where I've cut. I'm just kind of swinging that out of the way. surging right off of there. Now, just like with the um, fly shield, I'm gonna cut a long tail. I'm gonna cut it flush here at the, where we'll connect to the back. But I'm gonna leave a long tail um, here, right at the crotch point, and I'm just gonna thread it back down um, like I did with the shield. Okay, so once you have done that, I'm gonna take it to the ironing board, and I'm gonna press this open or fly open, and then this piece I'm gonna press to the left, um, well, it's the left one worn as well, but I'm gonna press it to the left, that seam allowance, okay? So let me try it back at the sewing machine. Okay, so now we need our pant fronts, and for the record, I have already sewn my back darts and my back pockets onto the back piece because that is so much easier before you put the fly in when you've got just everything single um, because, again, there's no center seam or a uh, side seam. Okay, so now I have uh, my um, the fly shields pressed open, and then here at the, the bottom, I've got the seam pressed to the left, and I've got a zipper. Now, I buy my zippers super long because, um, especially with the high-waisted styles, I want them, I prefer them to go like way past at the top, and then I'll cut them off. Um, this is actually a nylon one, a nylon zipper, size five, I believe. Um, so it's a little beefier than like your normal like size three um, nylon zippers. Um, but I kind of like these for pants, especially something like a linen pant. Jeans, I'll use a metal zipper. Um, but yeah, it, I don't know. I mean, it's not super dainty because of the, I mean, it's big, but you know. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I've got my uh, zipper foot on my machine and I've got my zipper face down. So I'm going to line up my zipper. So hopefully you're not getting confused by the seam lines. These seam lines we're ignoring, they don't exist. This seam line here, which is my basted seam, I am lining up the edge of my zipper tape. I'm on the right side of the pan. I'm lining up the edge of my zipper tape to that center seam right there. And I want the um, zipper stop to be uh, about, I don't know, a half of an inch above the bottom of the fly. Now, my biggest recommendation to you is to not pin zippers in because it distorts the zipper. If you're finding that you just can't keep things in place, 
use like Wonder Under or any kind of double stick tape. That's much better. Don't use pins. Okay, so once I've got that lined up, I'm going to grab just the fly piece and not the pants. So I've got just the rest of the pants are all to the left there. It's just the fly piece that I'm sewing this to. So again, I'm lining up the left side. The zipper's face down. I'm lining up the left side of the zipper to that seam line. And I want my zipper stop to be about half of an inch above where that was. It also doesn't matter the width of your zipper. It'll just, um, it just changes how inset the zipper is in the fly. It does not change the fit at all. All right, so once we're in, I'm just going to sew basically right in the middle of the zipper tape. Technically, you could get away without using a zipper foot on this step, but it's just easier. All right, 2.5 stitch length. So this is actually getting sewn in. This is not basted. I'm going to sew. Okay, hold on. Also, meaning to be winding a bobbin right now as well. It's not, it didn't catch. Nothing to do with the tutorial. <laughs> All right, so once we've got this just sewn into the right fly, we're gonna flip it over like so. And now we're gonna put it back under the machine and top stitch that down. So I usually just will run my, I don't know, about an eighth, and of an inch away, um, you know, so pull it taut. And I'm just gonna top stitch all the way down. Also, sometimes my zipper foot likes to loosen up. <laughs> okay, so now we have it top stitched. All right, so if we open the pants back up. Like so, this is what it looks like right now. So, it, I mean, it just naturally wants to flop over. So, <laughs> there it is, right side up, but it, you know, it's got all this excess here. So, it naturally just wants to go over to the left. So, you're just going to let it do that. And now... Again, you can glue it if you want to, but now I'm just going to flip this upside down here the other way. Okay, so now, once it's all nice and flat, I'm going to pick up the left side of the fly and the zipper. It really does just wanna fall right into place. And now I'm going to sew it down again. Oops. And sometimes your machine wants to unthread when you don't start on the fabric. Try again. And this time I'm kind of running my zipper foot along the zipper teeth that I can feel there. It kind of creates a ridge. There we go. All right, so now our zipper is in, folks. It's very exciting. <laughs> All right but we're not done yet. So now we're gonna flip this over to the right side. Wrong way. All right, flipping this over to the right side and everything should be lying nice and flat. So now you can definitely, um, I'm gonna switch back to my regular zipper foot just because I get better control. But now we are going to sew, um, your 
top stitching basically that goes along the fly. Now, some patterns come with a top stitching guide. The main thing you wanna do here is you wanna find your the bottom stop, which I can feel. Sometimes though, with some zippers, I have to like flip it you know, back and, and check and see where it is, but I can feel it, it's right there. Mark that with a pen because you do not want to hit that. That will break a needle before you can, yeah, do anything. Um, Yeah, so what I'm gonna do now is, um, again, you can, basically you're following along the fly piece. Um, I like to sew a little bit closer and try and grab some of that tape, but you really don't have to. Um, but we're gonna sew down here, and then once we're past our point that we've marked, which is our zipper stop, we're gonna sew curved around and then sew right here and stop it there. Now we don't have the, the zipper shield in yet, um, which is going to go behind the zipper, and that's okay. We'll put that in in just a second. Okay, so again, you can use chalk or a... Um, erasable pen of some sort to mark your line if you want it to be perfect I always eyeball it but you know do do whatever is easiest so now we're just going to I'm using a 2.5 stitch length um, if I were making jeans I would switch to top stitching thread here but I'm not <laughs> so um, we are sewing through all layers now everything's laying as it should and we're sewing through all layers Again, the downside to this pant pattern is that there's just so much fabric because um, you've got the backs attached to it as well. Okay, I'm gonna go past. I can feel that zipper stop. Okay, now we will do some bar tacking there in just a minute. Okay, so now we have top stitched that in place, nice and neat. And if we go to the back, make sure we caught everything. And you can kind of see, um, hopefully, <laughs> the stitching line and it's you know right there through the zipper tape again. All right, now, if you look at the wrong side of the pants, You'll notice that, you know, you could very easily sew your underwear up or, you know, whatever else into your zipper. We don't want that. So we're going to put a zipper shield, which if you have any pairs of jeans or anything like that, you know that that is um, always on there. All right. So this is the zipper shield piece on um, for this pattern. So we're just going to fold it right sides together. And here at the bottom, I'm just gonna sew a quarter of an inch. Did I say I switched back to my regular foot? I can't remember if I did. <laughs> I did, before I did that top stitching. All right, oh, for the... Oh wait, I think we were fine. My, I have a new spool of thread and I think it's not wanting to unravel very well not wanting to come off the spool and it keeps unthreading my needle okay all right quarter of an inch here at the bottom got the excess there um okay once we have done that sewn that at the bottom we are going to turn it right side out and give it a good press and then I am just going to um, surge the wrong sides here on this long edge. I'm just going to surge all the way down not cutting anything off I just want to um, get those together and then I'll tuck the bottom here I'll tuck the, the tails back through like I showed you so I'm just going to go do that real quick and then I'll come back and we'll attach this all right once we have this piece all right here we are looking at the back um, we want to attach this like so to the right side. 
and I like for it to cover the zipper tape as much as possible. Um, I kind of wish this one I, was wider, but it's not, so we're fine. <laughs> so I'm just going to, again, this is the right side, as much as I can, because we did top stitch that down, I'm just sewing this shield. Um, I just want to make sure, you want to make sure that this piece on this side covers your top stitching line there, because that's what's going to kind of anchor it. So just make sure that that gets over there. Just going to, for mine, just going to match that up with my tape. Okay, so I'm just sewing this on the right side to that fly piece and not to the pants. Just want it sewn there. So again, all the pants out of the way. <laughs> just a lot of layers. Yeah, I do wish this was a little wider. Which could I have done? Yes, that would have been a very simple thing to do. All right. So I'm just sewing right along the um, surging line. And I'm just sewing it until I get to the end here of this fly piece. Okay, now you just want to make sure you don't have anything caught. I think we're good. All right, so now it should be, you know, loose like this. Now we want it to lay nice and flat. We're going to go back to the right side. And with that in place, you want to make sure that it's, you know, folded the way that you want to wear it. So there's that shield all under there. I'm just gonna go down here um, and we're gonna tack it in place in a couple spots, just here at the bottom, because I mean, you need to be able to get into your pants, but this just keeps it from flopping around inside of your pants. And I think, yep, we should be good. All right, so I'm just going to do a couple of stitches here. And you could do this with a bar tack, which is a very small zigzag, zigzag stitch. And then I'm going to do the same right here. And go over that. Now, I'm gonna flip it wrong side again. Woo. This is my problem. I keep unthreading my needle because my so much fabric. All right, and then you can see that I have tacked it here and here. So now our final step is that you take your seam ripper and you open up those basting stitches. And this is how I do like all of my zipper flies. <laughs> all right, including jeans. Just there's more top stitching when it comes to jeans, but yeah. All right. Then you wanna pull out all of those basting threads, which I can do off camera, and there you have it. There's your fly. Everything's in there all nice and securely. You're, if you were to have a seam, seam line, it's all nice and hidden. <laughs> Not that you would. Okay, so that's how I put in the zipper. Now, this all, the zipper stays together until I do the um, waistband and then you just want to make sure before you do the waistband that you unzip the zipper because you want the stop to be on the piece that you're not cutting off and then I'll cut things off um, flush with the top when I get there. All right now I'm going to show you how I put the twill tape into the top part of the waistband. Okay so for this we need our two waistband pieces because remember we cut the this piece twice. My interfacing is kind of all over the place and um your unnotched side. So this is the side that you added your um, seam allowance up at the top. And we I added half an inch, do whatever you want. But I'm going to sew these together at half of an inch at that top. So this is the unnotched side of um, the waistband. So this will be right at the top. So I'm just gonna sew all the way down the seam, um, sew those together, right sides together at that seam. Okay. 
Now again, my interfacing's all wonky, but I can see the actual fabric through here, so it looks like it might look like I'm sewing at a wider seam allowance than a half inch, but I can actually see my fabric through because of the white. And the reason for that is that um, lining or uh, linen likes to be very shifty. Okay, so there we go. Now, before I do any kind of pressing or anything, I have a piece of quarter inch wide twill tape and um, mm -hmm, that just goes falling off. And I have cut this to the length of the pattern piece. So I didn't, I didn't match it to any of the pieces I'd already cut. I matched it to the actual pattern piece. So I'm going to sew this on, let's see, this would be, this is the waistband and the facing is underneath. And I'm just gonna line up, cause I matched this, you know, cut edge to cut edge here. And I'm going to sew this piece of twill tape. I'm just gonna sew, I'm lining up the left edge of the twill tape to the seam line that I just sewed. And I'm just gonna line it up and um, sew right down the middle of the twill tape, anchoring it to the seam allowance. So my eye is just following, I don't care about the raw edge anymore. I'm just following that seam line. Oh, and this has grown quite a bit. Actually, because this is a rectangle, here, I'm gonna show you guys this. So I cut out my interfacing pieces with, after I'd cut out my waistband pieces. So I cut out my waistband pieces and then I put them onto the interfacing to cut those out because I already had added. And look how much my linen grew just from cutting it out and then setting it on top of the interfacing. Like a half an inch. But I'm gonna trust my twill tape because I cut it to the pattern, which is why you wanna cut that to the pattern. So I'm just gonna do that and just lop off that extra. Okay. Now, this is the waistband, facings underneath. Now I'm going to open them up and push the seam allowance, I'm understitching now, and push the seam allowance towards the facing. Now, you could do this step and sew the um, twill tape down at the same time if you wanted to. I just find this easier. And honestly, the more lines of stitching that are in this waistband, I feel like the more stable it is. So now I'm just pulling these apart. This is the facing, and I'm sewing the, the seam allowance to the facing. Okay, there you go. So now we can press this, you know, wrong sides together and that will be our facing side and that will be, well, facing side that has the understitching and then that will be our regular side of our waistband. And now it just gets attached just like the instructions because now you've got the same pattern piece that you had, um, that you would have cut out for, you know, the regular pants. So it just gets inserted the same way now. But now that has that tool tape in there and so your linen won't grow because linen definitely, it's a looser weave so it, that makes it grow. Um, I mean, the interfacing obviously helps with that, but it also, when linen warms up, it gets even looser. So that's why in the summer, linen pants are so comfortable, but it's also why the waistbands grow. So having that tool tape in there will keep that from happening. Alrighty, hope that was helpful.